Hello and welcome to yet another exciting episode of the talk show. I'm your host, Suri Smith, coming to you from the Motrad showroom at Santon Auto. We have an incredibly exciting lineup, so let's not waste another moment. Buckle up because it's time to get this adventure started. Coming up on the show, we test out the Toyota CHR and give you some options. We share roundabout tips and we show you what went down at the BMW M Performance Festival. We went in search of a car that is not only fun and affordable to drive, but that also has a youthful appearance. We found exactly that in the Toyota CHR, which has distinctive front and rear fenders, as well as an inward bend boomerang-like design. Take a look at the stunner. Here is the Toyota CHR. It is powered by a 1.2 litre turbocharged petrol engine which pushes out 85 kilowatts of power and 185 newton meters of torque. That will have you reach 0 to 100 in 10.9 seconds. The exterior is very, very striking. Bold lines running from the back over the wheel arches all the way to the front, stunning LED lights and of course the color adding to that striking appearance. I'm super excited to show you guys exactly what this beauty is made of. The interior definitely matches the exterior. You've got nice retro touches coming through on the roof as well as the door panels and a lovely blend of materials. Uh, the retro styling of the dash which is nice, quite nice and flat and giving you that better open feeling of the road as it also, as this vehicle also has raised seating position. So yes, you're driving a larger vehicle but you feel con in completely in control. Apart from that, all your blind spots are open, so nothing is hidden and you will be able to see through all your different little angles that you wish to see through. You've got a multifunctional steering wheel where you can operate your volume levels and also your phone through, should you have already connected it through Bluetooth. And then you can also check your trip and also see um, how many kilometers you still have within your range to drive, how far you have already driven and so forth. Then this is an automatic transmission. It's a six-speed automatic transmission. This vehicle is also available in manual, also a six-speed transmission. And if you do feel like driving this automatic version in manual, there is also an option to do so. All you need to do is just switch to manual and then you operate through either putting it upwards or downwards. That will be plus or minus um, depending on whether you want to go to second, third, fourth or gear down. You also have cruise control which is very nice if you're traveling long distance so that is also uh, you're able to access that just slightly underneath your steering wheel on your right hand side. Very very easy to access everything falls to hand so you won't have a problem looking for something while you're driving. electrically operated windows front and back and you've got nice storage compartments in the front you've got cup holders two cup holders in the middle and then you've got compartments on either side where you could also store uh, some water bottles or whatever you're looking to store on either side of your doors and you've also got airbags which will assist with your safety as well as hill assist, ABS, uh, stability control and so forth just um, also adding to the safety features of this vehicle.
interior noise, you do have a little bit of wind noise and a little bit of engine noise, but nothing that won't be able to that you won't be able to sort out with just cranking up the volumes of your favorite sound. That's not a problem at all. Very fun to drive, you are able to accelerate quite quickly and the vehicle does grip to the road. Also it absorbs every little bump in the road so if you are going to find yourself tackling uh, more bumpier roads then you will still be enjoying your, your drive. Only thing I wasn't quite sure about is it is quite a large vehicle and should you want to alert someone of doing something wrong or just you know sometimes you want to blow the horn it's kind of it's kind of soft <laughs> Unfortunately, this vehicle does not come standard with a reverse camera or navigation or beepers. So if you are looking to have a vehicle that offers sensors in terms of when you are reversing to help notify you should you be approaching an object, this vehicle does not have that. So you're going to have to know how to drive, but I'm sure that can be added. You are able to connect your phone very quickly and effortlessly. All you need to do is just activate Bluetooth on your phone and then search for the Bluetooth on for your phone on the infotainment system. It will pick it up quite quickly and you just connect it uh, like that. So once you connect it, then you're able to be hands-free, which is very nice and the way it should be. There's also an option for USB and auxiliary input through your armrest, which is also really conveniently placed there for you should you be wanting to make use of that when you stop at a robot. You are also able to drive this vehicle in manual and automatic. This particular model is a six-speed automatic transmission and then also you're able to purchase a vehicle which is a six-speed manual transmission. This vehicle does accelerate quite quickly, so you would think that because it only pushes out 85 kilowatts and 185 newton meters that it would be a little bit slower, but no, it isn't. It does accelerate rather quickly and you're able to achieve your desired speed very, very quickly. Only thing I'm left wanting in this car is a sunroof and some heated seats, but that's just me. <laughs> the acoustics of this vehicle is really nice. So if you're listening to your favorite tune, let's just see if I can, it's, you can actually manually search for a song quite quickly. Space in the front is plentiful, you'll have enough legroom and headroom space and if you wish to adjust your steering that is also an option. Moving on over to the back, your door handles are all the way up here which adds to that retro styling. Jumping in you've also got enough legroom and headroom space so if you're going to be traveling long distance with some passengers they will be comfortable at the back as well. You've got nice Isofix mountings at the back so if you do have a baby chair that you want to strap in you will be able to do that. You've also got two cup holders on either side which will be able to store larger water bottles and then you've also got your electrically operated windows at the back for your convenience. Moving on over to the boot space. Plenty of space in the back even though there is a spare tire. You'll still be able to fit 
about four larger bags as well as two smaller bags in the back. So if you're going to be traveling with your family, that will be a comfortable trip as well. And then the, the tail light clusters, just adding to that style once again. How much will a millennial looking vehicle such as this, that is super fuel efficient and fun to drive, be putting you back? Just under 400,000 Rand. Now we like to keep you the consumer up to date on all your options. So if you are in the market to buy, let's see whether any of the following beauties catch your fancy. Let's start with the star of our show, the Toyota CHR 1.2T Plus Auto, which has a starting price of 359,600. Its 1.2-litre turbocharged petrol engine pushes out 85 kilowatts of power and 185 newton meters of torque, consuming on average a claimed figure of 6.4 litres per 100 kilometres. You will also get two standard airbags for your safety. Or you could opt for a Nissan Juke 1.6T four-wheel drive Tecna, which has a starting price of 399,900. The Juke Tecna is an all-wheel drive, which houses a turbocharged petrol engine that pushes out 140 kilowatts of power and 240 newton meters of torque, which will have you reach zero to 100 in 8.2 seconds. Average fuel consumption won't be too heavy on the pocket as the Juke Tecna has a claimed average fuel consumption figure of 6.5 litres per 100 kilometres. Safety is also on the forefront as you will get six standard airbags. You could also opt for a Mazda CX-3 2-litre individual auto which has a starting price of 365400 The CX-3 sports a petrol engine with 6-speed automatic transmission which pushes out 115 kilowatts of power and 204 Nm meters of torque, sprinting from 0 to 100 in 9.5 seconds. Fuel consumption won't be too bad as the CX-3 has a claimed average figure of 6.1 litres per 100 kilometres. You will also get a list of added safety features as standard which also includes 6 airbags. Lastly, you could opt for a Honda HRV 1.8 Elegance, which has a starting price of 407,300. Its 1.8 litre petrol engine pushes out 105 kilowatts of power and 172 newton meters of torque, which will have you reach 0 to 100 in 10.1 seconds. Fuel consumption won't break the bank as the HRV has a claimed average fuel consumption figure of 6.8 litres per 100 kilometres. You will also get six standard airbags. Traffic circles, how do they really work? Up next we give some helpful tips to better understand the giant circle. Roundabout is a one-way circular intersection that reduces traffic congestion while maximizing safety for drivers, pedestrians and cyclists. Because of the slower speeds and fewer points of impact, roundabouts have been proven to reduce serious and fatal collisions by up to 80%. In addition to this improved safety conditions, roundabouts reduce delays as drivers are prompted to yield rather than stop at a red light. This allows roundabouts to handle larger traffic volumes for the same number of lanes. Roundabouts are new for many drivers. But following these basic steps will help you safely navigate roundabouts as a motorist, cyclist or pedestrian. As you approach the roundabout, slow down and watch for signs to help you select what lane you need to be in based on whether you are turning right, left or going straight through. Choose your lane and signal just as you would at a regular intersection. Yield to the pedestrians in the entry crosswalk. Look to the left yield to all traffic in the roundabout and enter when it is safe to do so. Stay in your lane to your exit. Signal right and exit the roundabout and yield to pedestrians in the exit crosswalk. It's now time to take a short break but do stay tuned for more motoring action when we return.